The importance of prayer, I tell you, is not so much God's answer as it is the impact it has on our spirits. Maybe you didn't get it. I said the importance of prayer is not so much God's answer to the prayer as it is the impact of that prayer on our spirits. Understand that before you ask, God hears you. Understand before you ever ask God for anything, He knows your need. So it's not your praying, praying, praying that causes God to do something. But there's something about prayer, which is a dynamic communication with God the Father. That impacts on our spirits. It causes our spirits to glow. Maybe you don't understand what I'm talking about. But every time that we pray, and that's why the praying in spirit is far more important than praying in our understanding. But when we pray, our spirits are set aglow. And that glowing of the spirits is where the glory of God is revealed in our inner man. And then we find ourselves working in the path that he has planned for us. Hallelujah. We find ourselves stepping into destiny. We find ourselves coming in at the right time, thinking the right thoughts, saying the right word, and doing the right thing at the right time. Can you shout amen, somebody? <laughs> Hallelujah. Me not always to pray and not to faint. Now, the higher levels of all this is actually when you begin by praying in other tongues. You begin by praying in other tongues. You begin by praying in other tongues. If I pray in an unknown tongue, it says, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. I don't know what I'm saying. He says, what is it then? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. Now, Paul tells us how to activate the spirit. He says, by speaking in tongues. When you speak in an unknown tongue, he says, it's your spirit that's praying. And your understanding is unfruitful. Revelation chapter number one, I'm in verse six. Are you there? Yes. And have made us kings. That's where we got to. Kings who decree. They make decrees. One of the most moving prayers that I saw in that Bible was the prayer of David. A very short prayer. When he was in danger, David knew. But for God, he was a dead man. Then he prayed. He said, oh God. Because if anybody went to, to Ahithophel for counsel, that man was a story he had heard from God. David was moved to prayer. He said, oh God. Turn the counsel of Ahithophel to foolishness. Brothers and sisters, when we speak in other tongues, we are not only talking to God. There's a time when we speak in other tongues in prayer, and the Bible says we are speaking mysteries. He says when we begin to speak in other tongues, no man understands. Didn't say no angel understands. Says no man understands because we are speaking tongues of angels. This is where the power is. The Bible says, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, edifieth himself, emboldens himself, charges himself, builds himself. He emboldens himself. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, that's the tongue of angels. Sometimes when we are speaking in tongues, we are talking to God Almighty. The Bible says, we are speaking mysteries. What are mysteries? Things that cannot be understood by the ordinary mind. Tongues of angels. At that point, we are talking to angels. We are giving commands. There's something that's been missing for a long time. That angel has just been instructed to go find it. I sent my application somewhere. As I start speaking in tongues, my angel goes and gets it on the table. See, the times when you begin to speak in other tongues, some strange words start coming up. Let them come up. Some of you say, I want to have children. You know how, you're, you're not about to have, no matter the promises, until you start speaking in tongues. Hey. Hey. 
See, we talk about Paul the Apostle so much. You say, Paul, 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 Paul. Paul was a great apostle. See the secret. Look at it. There's only one thing that Paul said he did more than anybody else. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else. The only one thing that puts him ahead of all others. He says in verse 18, I thank my God. I speak with tongues more than ye all. That's all. The guy is batting. He's driving every once in a while. He said, I thank my God. I speak with tongues more than ye all. More than ye all. He's sitting and waiting for somebody. The MD is coming. Montoko Boraya. Magaba Sako Borohi. I mean, listen, this is a strange guy. Here he's washing clothes. Oh, come on, Tabaya. Rabababa Sonteke. Yep. Amen. He's cooking in the kitchen. Monteke Bobaria. Rababa Sondo Grosh. Rakaya la bobo sikre mamandili. Hallelujah. That's it. All the time. I mean, he's releasing power. Angels are at work. How can he be broke when his angels are receiving instruction all the time? How can he be broke? We're talking exercise your spirit. Hallelujah. He says, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays. My mind is unfruitful. Doesn't understand what's going on. But my spirit prays. My spirit prays. There's a lot of spirits praying, but they don't have no word. And so the spirit is praying without light. The word of God, the entrance of thy word, give it light. Light goes into your spirit. And when you're praying about something, your spirit is crying. But there's no light. You've got to study God's word. See, because it'll give you light in every area. It'll give you light about your work. Give you light about your family. Give you light about any situation you find yourself. Then your spirit can pick up that signal. Otherwise, you're going to be crying in the spirit, praying in tongues, but your spirit is not getting nothing. Because there's no light. The entrance of thy word give it light. I fast to exercise my spirit. Don't have any problem hearing from God. Hear and talk to me. In fact, a lot of times when I fast, it's because he said so. So he already spoke. Ha <laughs> ha, <laughs> Hallelujah. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth. But my understanding is on. So what is it then? I'll pray with the spirit. See, you've got to. Listen, you can take long strides in the spirit. So, prayer is labor. It's not always easy to pray. There's so many things that distract you and stop you from praying. But you've got to fight to get the time. You've got to fight to get the opportunity. You've got to fight to get the concentration, the attention. Because sometimes you want to pray and then you're praying, so many thoughts are coming to your mind. Now all the thoughts that didn't come throughout the day, now they're coming. Now you're getting reminders of other things you're supposed to be doing. And the first battle is battling all those things, fighting those thoughts away from your mind and trying to bring your mind back to prayer. I'm supposed to be praying. Then you're thinking about this and then thinking about that and you fight yourself again. I'm supposed to be praying. You know, it's like you're really having a tough time with demons now. He said human beings ought always to pray and not to faint. In other words, God knows that he has so fashioned us he has so created us, He has made us, such that we cannot live without praying. He said men ought always to pray.
They were made to pray. If they don't pray, they will not win in life. They will fail. He has said it. He understands the construction of the human being. He's told us, you must pray. If you're not praying, then you are playing. And so life is going to be a failure. Period. Men ought always to pray and not to faint, not to give up. So challenges come to you, not to destroy you. But through prayer, you can win. That's what he's saying. Difficult times must come. But that if you pray, you'll be put over. Hallelujah. How long you really want to serve him? How you've made up your mind you don't want to make no mistakes? You want to serve God with all your heart and all your life and all your soul, all your mind. You really want to serve God. And God knows about it. But now Jesus counsels you by the Holy Ghost and says, Son, daughter, watch and pray. That you enter not in a temptation. Now Jesus says, pray, watch and pray that you enter not in the temptation. What are you going to do? You're going to start praying now first. The Bible says they appeared unto him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. This is what we need. And thanks be unto God, that's why he sent us the Holy Ghost. To strengthen us. So that in times of crisis, in times of temptations, we will not drown. This was what he had. This was the reason that night he was still praying and he was able to pray himself through that pressure. The pressure was coming in the morning. They'll get him tonight. Tomorrow he'll, he'll be on trial. And while standing there on trial, he'll either deny his father or stand his ground. But tonight, I've got to win, he says. I've got to win. I've got to win. And so he prays. He prays. Sleep is coming. But he prays. He was out there all day with the disciples. Now they're sleeping. They don't have the Holy Ghost. So they sleep off. You do have the Holy Ghost. But you may still sleep. Except you put what you've got to work. The Bible says they appeared unto him an angel from heaven. Strengthening him. Strengthening him. He says, watch and pray that the enter not in the temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. It's not hard to take a short time, even in a day, to pray and fast. Fasting means that you separate yourself from everything else. Okay? Especially food. Did you hear that? Everything else, especially food. So... You talk to the Lord. And praying in the Spirit is the most beautiful of all. While you're praying in the Spirit, the Holy Ghost can take the next steps. You, you, you're speaking in tongues in, like you're trying to get up, okay? Speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues, and then the Holy Ghost props you up. He helps you. There are limitations. There are infirmities, weaknesses. You don't know what to pray for about this situation. And so the Holy Spirit takes over the prayer. That's what he says. There's the one your spirit is praying. Your spirit is praying in tongues. He says, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth. But my understanding is unfruitful. My spirit prayeth. You remember that? My spirit prayeth. So it's your spirit that prays in tongues. Even though the language is granted your spirit by the Holy Ghost. But in this one, it's not your spirit that's praying anymore. Look at it. Likewise, the spirit also help at our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we are. But the Spirit Himself make an intercession for us. He's doing the prayer now. With what? Groanings which cannot be uttered. You see, at that moment, you, you've been speaking in tongues, your spirit's been praying. You come to this level, the Holy Ghost takes over, and now you don't, it's no longer tongues. 
It's all deep sighs and groans, as though you're crying. You don't know why you're crying. And you oh, oh, oh. you can't even stop it. No words are being formed. And all you got is deep sighs and groans. You even have to hold your stomach. You don't know why. Tears coming out. And there's no pain, but this crying won't stop. Why? The Spirit Himself make an intercession for us with groanings. He's taken over the prayer. When you pray like this, you know you're setting things for the future. Oh God, keep our andogo so pradila. Ah, ah. Now, to pray with the Spirit means that you're praying in other tongues. All right. I will pray with the spirit and I'll pray with the understanding also I will sing with the spirit and I'll sing with the understanding also he says when I pray in an unknown tongue my spirit prays but my understanding is unfruitful now to pray in the spirit means to pray in the Word of God. Now, praying in other tongues is also praying in the Spirit. Which means that the prayer is coming from the inspiration of your Spirit. I want you to notice what I said. Firstly, I said it's praying in the Word of God. That means we're not just talking about reading out prayer from the Bible. We're talking about the inspiration of the Spirit that's speaking forth the Word of God through you. So you are speaking, you're praying by revelation. You are praying the Word of God. That's praying in the Spirit. That's praying in the Spirit. And when you get into speaking in other tongues, that's still praying in the spirit. Why? Because it's the inspiration from your spirit that's still coming forth. When you begin to pray with prophecy, that's praying in the spirit. Why? Because the prophecy is also coming by revelation to your spirit. Are you still there? When you find yourself groaning, groaning, groaning in the spirit in prayer, that's praying in the spirit. Are you still there? But they are not all praying with the Spirit. Why? Because when the Spirit prays, He speaks in a heavenly language. If I pray in an unknown tongue, He says, My Spirit prays. My understanding is unfruitful. And when He prays, with the Spirit, He speaks mysteries. Mysteries unto God. So here when it says to pray with all kinds of prayer and supplication in the Spirit, He's saying that we make requests with revelation. Are you hearing me? So when you, if you're praying for a certain brother or sister, or praying for the church, you pray with revelation in the Word of God. You don't just pray a dumb prayer. Every prayer is not prayer. He says to pray. He says praying always with all manner of prayer. With supplications in the spirit. In the spirit. Stay in the spirit as you pray. Don't be perturbed by what your enemy is trying to do against you. No, stay in the spirit. Stay in the spirit. He says praying always with all prayer. In supplication in the spirit. In the spirit. Hey, glory to God. In the spirit. When you pray and confess your pain, you are not praying in the spirit. When you are talking about, oh God, all those people over there, they are witches. Oh God, we are afraid of them. No, you are not seen in the spirit. Listen, you've been raised together with Christ.
You've been made to sit together with Christ. You are not afraid of witches. You are not afraid of wizards. You are not afraid of robbers. You are not afraid of them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We are praying in the Spirit. We take up the Word of God. And we pray in the Holy Ghost. Are you hearing me? Praying in the Spirit. If only you could see that the man that you're praying for, that the woman that you're praying for, no weapon fashioned against them shall prosper. And then you prophesy it. Father, in the name of Jesus, as brother John travels, no evil shall befall him. No plague shall come nigh him. No weapon fashioned against him shall prosper. You pray as a priest. You speak as a king. Why? You are a royal priest. Somebody shout hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Liba lava shanda lava haya. Oh, glory to God. You say, Father, I pray for all those who live in this estate tonight. I pray in the name of Jesus. The angels of God surround this place. The hand of God is upon every one of us. The presence of the Lord is in this place. I speak as a king. I pray as a priest. Oh, glory to God. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost tonight. My, 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 my. I know who I am. We are praying for all pregnant women in the church. All of our sisters that are expecting. All expecting mothers. And as we intercede, no complications. We decree in the name of Jesus. Every pregnancy will carry its full course. And a child will be born healthy, strong, as a blessing to the family. In the name of Jesus. We come against accidents. We come against mishandling of doctors. We come against wrong prescriptions. In the name of Jesus, we release angels to guide them and to lead them in the name of Jesus. We decree health for the mother. We decree health for the baby. In the name of Jesus. No doctor will mislead them. No nurses will mislead them. Father, because your angels are with them. In the name of Jesus. And they're going to give birth. And we're going to dedicate those babies in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Lord. You got a problem somewhere. You don't know what, what, what it is to attack. What to pray for. Someone is owing you. You don't know what to pray for. Should I ask for the money? Should I let him go? Should I, should I, what, what to pray for? So we are forced to pray according to our present thinking. So the verse, the, the, that 26 verse there, the Holy Ghost tells us something. It says, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what to pray for as we ought. Haven't you seen people who went to the doctor and they thought that they were pregnant and they wanted something done only to get to the doctor and the doctor said it was a tumor. Haven't you seen those who the doctor said it was a tumor and they brought out a fetus? It was a baby. There have been people who went on a particular diagnosis. They went on a treatment only to find out they've been on the wrong treatment. Haven't you made an application only to find out they got the wrong guy? Think about it. We do not know what to pray for as we ought. So why would you continue that kind of prayer when you are praying off key? Sometimes when you pray, you feel this thing welling up. Let him go out. A lot of times when we are in our times of prayer or listening to the word and we are inspired by the word of God or we are studying the Bible, that's when these new tongues come. Our vocabulary in the realm of the spirit is expanded, enlarged. Leko skaradoska, limandogre, levradaska, pahano satriga.
But you know what? You just pray for me. Everybody fasting and praying. I'm going to do something. I will go into the presence of the king. If I perish, I perish. Now she made up her mind. She knew that if she said it without prayer, you understand, spiritual support, if she said it without praying, if she made a, 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 a decree for herself, or a promise, or a vow for herself without praying, it will not work. That's what prayer does for you. You understand? When you make a promise to God, if you don't pray, it will not work. You will not be able to fulfill your vow until you pray and put your spirit with it. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Some people say, I vowed a vow and I forgot. Yeah, you forgot because you would not pray. I said, I always do this. And then you didn't do it because you did not pray. When you pray, the spiritual support is given to you. You're spiritually fortified on the inside of you. Then you can do what you said you would do. That's why when you want to go out on evangelism, you've got to pray. Otherwise, when you get out, you will not have sufficient courage to pull the word out of you. But if you pray and soak yourself in the Holy Ghost, when you come out, the anointing will be there. They fasted day one. They prayed. They prayed. Day two. Something was happening. Hey, yeah, yeah. Day three. And when it was day three, guess what? King Ahasuerus could not sleep. He was on his bed, but he could not sleep. He could not sleep. Something was happening in the spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Brother, something happens when we pray. Are you hearing me? Something happens when we pray. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. The Bible says that night, he could not sleep. He turned this way and that way. He could not sleep. He said, get me the king's records. Get me the diary of the kingdom. He could not sleep. He said, read it to me. And they began to read. As they read, they got to a place where it was Mordecai that saved the king's life. He said, tell me, Mordecai saved my life? He was the one that reported those two guys who wanted to kill the king. Was anything done for him? They said, no, sir. He said, nothing was done for a man that wanted to save the king's life. Listen, all these years, nobody reminded the king. All these years, he forgot about him. All these years, the whole kingdom forgot about Mordecai. Hallelujah. But when prayer was made, hi, hi, hi. oh glory to God. <laughs> it reminds me of what Herod did when he took James, the brother of John, and slew him with the sword. And people began to say, an apostle? How could the apostle die? The apostle? The apostle died? How could he die? You mean, you mean Herod killed him? What about all the anointing they talked about? How, 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 how could they kill him? But Herod was happy. Because the Jews were happy. Then, he proceeded, the Bible says, to take Peter also. Then the brethren began to say, Ah! If they take Peter now, they may be coming for the rest of us. And the other apostles, instead of saying, maybe, maybe James wasn't praying hard enough. Maybe the anointing wasn't working in his life. No, maybe James did something wrong. Uh -uh. Jesus said, men ought always to pray. And not to faint. Not to yield. Not to give up. Are you hearing me? Not to give up to the devil. Not to give in to the devil. We don't give in. We don't give up. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? We have to pray. And now Matthew, Bartholomew, they began to call the rest of them. John, they said, everybody to the house of God. We've got to pray. Peter has been arrested. We've got to pray. And until he comes out, we are not eating nothing. Hallelujah. They 
stop the blame game. They stopped thinking about what he might have done wrong. Everybody said, we've got to pray. And they began to pray. The Bible says in Acts chapter 12 and verse 5, that prayer, he tells us prayer was made without ceasing of the church. As they prayed, Oh, Bala, Bahati. Heaven opened. An angel of God was sent there. And he set Peter free. Oh, glory to God. Yes. When we pray. Are you hearing me? God said, I didn't call the children of Israel to cry out to me in vain. Call and I will answer you. He said, in the day of trouble, call upon me. I will hear you and I will answer you. And you shall glorify me. Hallelujah. I said it's a call to prayer.